friends, on this day, this most holy of all days, this butcher's picnic day, I will recount to you a story by which we can all enrich our lives. Earlier this week, a parishioner, who shall remain anonymous, came to me and said, Vicar, for that is my name, <laughs> Vicar, I have fallen by the wayside and taken the favors of another woman. That troubled man is amongst us today with his good lady, who suspects not his infidelity. Of course, he shall remain nameless, but these were my very words to him. Bert Cranshaw of 12 won that drive. <laughs> You must cease forth with this furtive liaison with Elsie Mackenzie of 14 Wombat Drive, <laughs> who I notice is also amongst our little flock today, but shall remain anonymous. <laughs> For your good wife, Joan Cranshaw, in spite of her recent sins with the nameless Jim Tuttle, Harry Blackstone, <laughs> and my humble self, <laughs> is a good woman when she is sober. <laughs> and so as the choir boys pass amongst you, I ask you all to deposit your car keys in preparation for the latest auxiliary building fund and swingers club lucky dick. <laughs> By the way, Nancy Greenlaw of 16 Wombat Drive, mine are the bicycle clips. <laughs> for instant pain relief, Naked Figure Show. Starring in order of medicinal value, the Take It With Confidence for quick freeway relief, Ross Higgins, the gently soothes away aches and pains, Nolene Brown, and the settles upset tummies fast, Kev Goldby. Plus this week's special guest, the strong one that won't make you drowsy, Auntie Jack as the Naked Vicar. I am not a vicar, I'm a lady. Anyway, I'm not going to take any clothes off. That'll be filthy. And if I catch anyone in this show taking his clothes off, Nolan Brown or Kim Colsby or you, Ross Higgins, I'll rip your bloody arms off. Finally, a message to frustrated Napoleon of King Roy, Queensland. No, your fantasy is not unusual. We know of many peanut farmers who think they run the country. <laughs> However, should you try to make this dream a reality, be warned, you're in danger of losing your nuts. And now, a word from the Liberal Party. The Mercedes-Benz. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> and a word from the Labour Party. The vehicle. Thank you. Blood out. And from the Country Party. The horse. Thank you. Hang on, I've got another one. What? Superphosphate bounty. Ha, ha, ha. Got you again, you smart city bastard. Thank you. <laughs> sure think so, too. And finally, a word from the DLP. Yellow peril. <laughs> Where? Everywhere. Pardon? Millions of them. To the north, behind the door, under me bed. Lock up, you women. Drop the bomb. Why do you hate the Chinese? Course African bongs are too big and strong. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Watch it. <laughs> yes, here it is, gardeners. The show you've been waiting for. Yes, it's time for Getting Rooted. <laughs> Hello, listeners. This is Cyril Wyndham and... Cecil Simpson. Saying, sit back, settle down, slip aside your secateurs. <laughs> and enjoy Getting Rooted. That uh, new opening patter certainly puts some zip in the show, Cyril. Certainly does, Sess. Those Leonard Teal lessons are finally paying off. <laughs> Still, enough of the tinsel of showbiz. Uh, what have you got for us this week, Sess? A uh, certain piece of correspondence from a concerned listener and a great fan of getting rooted, <laughs> whose words sound like the siren of an arm. Alarm, that is, that word, for the scourge of the uh, sweet pea will soon be upon us. Do you mean that? Yes, the sulphur-crested sapsucker. Great Caesar's ghost. That sent a tremble through my trellis, sis. That's a uh, dramatic turn of phrase, Cyril? It's a dramatic moment, sis. Be that as it may, Cyril, we mustn't lose our respective cools. There'll be panic in the streets. Remember the passion fruit blight of 66? Uh, Say no more, sis. My lips are sealed. But 
what to do about the dreaded uh, sap sucker. First, purchase from any news agent or respectable bookseller my handy little booklet, The Sap Sucker and You Know Your Enemy. <laughs> I wrote some of that too, listeners. Not as much as I did, listeners. I dispute that spurious claim, sis. You seem to conveniently forget that it was my biro. <laughs> okay, Smarty, who did the drawings? But who owned the texture colours? <laughs> Tell the listeners that little fact and I think they'll find that more than salient. You're becoming overexcited, Cyril. Let's get back to the sap suckers. You can stick your sap suckers, sis. And what about the listeners' sweet peas? They can stick them too. Sarah. What? See these secateurs? Yes. Sit on them and twist. <laughs> Cleavage, the magazine for today's liberated woman. This month, Cleavage looks at sex again and asks, why not? <laughs> and continuing Cleavage's series of East Meets West, famed Japanese psychologist Chang Long Ni gets together with American sex therapist Dr. Joyce Tremble to bring you the Knee Tremble Method. <laughs> and in an exclusive interview, we ask, is there sex after death? Read the Pope's amazing answer. <laughs> sex at Buckingham Palace. Cleavage looks behind the throne with a startling expose of the sex life of the Queen's corgis. <laughs> Plus, Cleavage's nature boy of the month, Humphrey Bear. <laughs> Cleavage, the pseudo-intellectual magazine designed to exploit today's liberated woman. <laughs> Sharp? Yeah, what do you want? A packet of those cigarettes, please. There you go, 80 cents. Well? Well, what? Where's me horse? Eh? On telly, you have a horse with these. They don't hear. But I want to gaze manfully into the setting sun and take a deep drag and look rugged and butch and dum dum da dum dum da You know, like that. Bruce. Yeah? Get out of here. Oh, now, come on. Where's me Stetson? You don't get a Stetson, just the fags. But I want to be able to pull it down over my steely blue eyes and look brooding and firm of jaw. <laughs> Put the pack on your head. Ah, <laughs> oh, come on. Do I get a sheepskin jacket then? No. Set of spurs? No. Well, what do I get? Brown teeth, rotten breath and a yellow tongue. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, can I have a pack of mints then? You know, the ones with the hole in the middle? Ten cents. Do I get John English with them? <laughs> Bruce? Yes? Piss off. <laughs> We interrupt this program to bring you an apology from the ABC. Ten years ago, John Chance read the following item on the ABC News. Today, a woman was bitten on the funnel by a fingerweb spider. <laughs> we apologize for this because obviously it should have read... Yesterday, a woman was bitten on the funnel by a fingerweb spider. <laughs> However, a late memo just at hand reveals that this too is wrong, for which we also apologize. It should read, she was bitten on the web by a funnel finger spider. No, she wasn't. She was fingered on the funnel by a bitten web. No, no, she wasn't. She hit it with a brick, and it wasn't even a spider, it was a budgie. <laughs> That was a trick news item. Back to our normal program. <laughs> and now, without fear, without prejudice, and without pride, the ABC presents a searing chronicle of lust and raw animal passion. It's... <laughs> Blue Hills by Gwen Tedious. <laughs> Episode 28,563. John and Mary are still out of town and don't look like returning. Elsie and Bert are tired. Jerry is still asleep. Michael and Pat just don't care anymore. And Harry's gone outside to kick a tree. <laughs> Meanwhile, Connie visits Pat. Are you there, Pat? 
know. <laughs> oh. That was Blue Hills. <laughs> Connie was played by Orson Welles. <laughs> Pat by Lionel Rose, and Bird Noises by the Premier of Queensland. <laughs> we interrupt this program to cross to our roving reporter. Hello, this is Derek Roving reporting to you from the International Air Terminal, where I'm speaking to the head of a new elite branch of the Customs Department, Ms. Dorothy Finchley. Hello, Dorothy. Hello, darling. Now. When, then? Later. Uh, tell me, Ms. <laughs> Finchley, what's this new division all about? Well, we here at Checkpoint Arnold are charged with a specific duty. What's that? The detection and apprehending of person or persons engaged in the nefarious and illegal practice of forcibly concealing and transporting protected fauna outside the territories of the Commonwealth, to wit, Australia's national bird. Which means? putting the arm on chook smugglers. <laughs> so, chook smuggling is on the increase, eh? Enormously. Why do you think is this? Well, you see, in the East, our very own humble chooks are regarded as highly erotic creatures, possessed of great and potent sexual stimulants, particularly the beak. <laughs> A fact that you and I proved quite wrong last night. <laughs> Not now. When? <laughs> Later. You mean they smuggle the whole bird for the beak? Not necessarily. There are gangs out there in the suburbs, armed to the teeth with pinking shears, ready to pounce on any unsuspecting chook. No. Yes. It's all over in a flash. Do you realise that throughout Australia there are thousands of beakless chooks scratching in the dirt and thumping their heads on the ground? <laughs> It's pathetic. <laughs> Tell me, how do you go about apprehending these chook molesters? We have highly sophisticated techniques. Observe. See this man coming towards us? To your untrained eyes, he's just another businessman in a grey suit with grey briefcase and a pair of black jockets pulled over his head. <laughs> yes, right. I see that. Well... To my trained eye, something gives him away as a chook smuggler. Would it be the chook in his breast pocket? <laughs> Correct. Now, observe my sophisticated interrogation techniques. Hey, you? Yes? Are you a chook smuggler? No. Well, if you're not a chook smuggler, here comes the trick question, Derek. What's that in your breast pocket? Uh, a cocktail saveloy with feathers on it. Pass. <laughs> Breathe easy, Derek. False alarm. Well, I must say, that was very exciting, Dorothy. Oh, just routine, Derek. We're used to living on the razor's edge here at Checkpoint Arnold, ever vigilant, ever watchful, trusting no one, suspecting everyone. For we are the guardians. By the way, what's that lump in your pants? <laughs> it's not a chook tied to your inside leg, is it? <laughs> Dorothy? Just testing. <laughs> now... All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, direct by satellite to all you folks throughout Australia, live from the beer garden of the Breakfast Creek Hotel in the heart of beautiful downtown Brisbane, we're proud to present the Logie Awards. And here's your host for this evening. Let's hear it for Slamming Bob Dreamer. show. Well, tonight's the big one, an all-time record presentation night, because tonight, over the next 12 boring hours, we're going to give away 528 lucky Logies. Let's hear it for the Logie. And now, live and in person, all the way from Hollywood, USA, America, our token superstar. Yes, let's hear it for Chuck Ripplejaw. <laughs> Chuck, where are you, Chuck? Where'd you put him, Harry? Oh, 
I see. Oh, come on up, Chuck. Come on up. <laughs> Perhaps one of our lovely hostesses could help Chuck out of his chair. That's the way. Now, come on, Chuck. You're doing fine. <laughs> up the stairs. Chuck, well, you can come that way if you like. Uh, Oh, okay, now, perhaps one of our lovely hostesses can help Chuck out of the curtain while uh, we take a commercial break. Don't go away now. How's it going, Charlie? All finished. Tap fixed. See? Very good, but what about the mess, Charlie? No mess, Charlie. That's me. Got new cleaning stuff. See? Turns blue. Cleans deep down. Right through bar. <laughs> Charlie, do you have any psychological problems? Got no problems. Got new cleaning stuff. See? Turns blue. Eat through shoe now. <laughs> Charlie, are you sure you don't have a speech impediment? Got no speech impediment. Got new cleaning stuff. See? Turns blue. Makes lino curl off floor. Charlie. Charlie, I'm terribly worried about the way you speak. Now, I'm a speech therapist and I can help you. Need no help. Got new cleaning stuff. But, Charlie... The way you speak, it's unnatural. Now, I really want to help. Mrs. can help. Mrs. can shut mouth while Charlie does commercial. Or Charlie make mess of Mrs. with wrench. <laughs> Welcome back to the Logie Show. And here, finally on stage, leaning next to me, yeah. is superstar Chuck Ripplejaw. Yeah. How you feeling, Chuck? Oh, wow. What a, what a trip, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> Jet lag, huh? By the way, it's Bob. Where? Uh, here, me. Oh, far out, man. <laughs> By the way, Ralph, I just want to say what a wonderful country you have here. It's wonderful. Just wonderful country. <laughs> Good, wonderful. Chuck. Good. Yeah. The people here are so warm and friendly. They're just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people. Uh, Good, yeah. Chuck. Anyway, and I just want to uh, say yeah. I've always wanted to visit here because I have a deep personal attachment to this country. Really, Chuck? Yeah, I once played a Mountie. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. Uh, Chuck, uh, now, yeah. now moving on to... Right on. Uh, I can't wait to get out into your woods and shoot some more moose. <laughs> you mean kangaroo? Uh, well, I didn't know you had kangaroos here, too. Wow, how about that? They're kind of unique to the country. Oh, wow, man, I thought they came from Australia. <laughs> they do. Well, uh, how come you got them jumping around Saskatchewan? I mean, they must have swum across, huh? They don't swim. Wow, that's one hell of a jump. <laughs> You've uh, never been to Australia before, Chuck? Right on, baby. I hope to get there next year. They want me to go there, you know, to present some bogeys or something. Like that. Uh, you're in Australia now, Chuck. Yeah, I... Wow, some trip, huh? <laughs> I just want to say what a wonderful country you have here. It's wonderful, wonderful country. The people are so warm, and you, you did say Australia. That's right, Chuck. What do you say? Can I have another drink? I think I'm going to fall over. <laughs> and sure enough, just like last year's Hollywood guest star, he's falling over. Let's hear it for him, Gus <laughs> interrupt this show for another apology, this time to the RSPCA. Earlier, we mentioned that a woman hit a budgie with a brick. We wish to point out that under no circumstances will the ABC allow budgie bricking in its studios. In fact, the budgie, who was very depressed at the time, committed suicide by running under a falling anvil. And that was a trick apology. And welcome to day one of how to censor dirty, suggestive things on radio, television and film. Today we shall explore the use of the bleep. This is a bleep. Beep. And this is how you use one. Now, there's a growing controversy in the community about suggestive song lyrics. However, discreet placement of the beep. can neutralise these filthy, depraved words. For instance... I could have beep all night. <laughs> I could have beep 
all night and still have beep some more. And here's another filthy little ditty we cleaned up. Beep, beep, beep. Delilah. I saw her beep. on the night when I passed by her window. I saw the flickering shadow of Beep. on the blind. She stood there Beeping. Then I found my Beep. in my hand and she Beep. no more. G'day, Narelle. What's that you're wearing? It's my new cross your heart. Very becoming, Narelle, but you're supposed to wear a frock over it. <laughs> they don't on TV. They don't work at the Builders Labourers Federation. <laughs> like the new shorts, but Any tougher and they'd rust. Mm, pity they don't quite cover the tattoo. What tattoo? The one on your knee. It says, uh-oh, razzmatazz. <laughs> Oh, my label slipped again. Mm, very trendy, but. Thank you. Tell me, how's Wayne? Still at Arnott's, is he? No, nah, chucked it in too dangerous. What happened? He got his thongs caught in the ice bovo machine. <laughs> very, very nasty. Came out covered in coconut with a raspberry streak down his inside leg. <laughs> Brought him home in a cellophane pack. What did you do? Tried everything. Hedge clippers, pinking shears, nothing worked. In the end, I had to rip him open with my teeth. Bloody cellophane. Oh, what's he doing now then? He's taking the Ben Crop correspondence course of underwater heroics. <laughs> what for? The money. He reckons he's going to wrestle a whale off Jervis Bay next Sunday. But I don't know, Narelle, his rigorous training program, it's taking its toll. Oh, where does he train? In the bath. <laughs> God, he goes through some hot water, does Wayne? Sorted out his kidneys, though. <laughs> Isn't the bath a bit small for whale wrestling? You're not wrong, Narelle. That's why he's in training with Claude. Claude? The goldfish. That's a bit unfair, isn't it? Yeah, horrible to watch. It's a massacre. You'd think Claude had let Wayne win one of them. How does Claude beat him? Very dirty fight, Narelle. He slips up the leg of Wayne's speedos. And while Wayne's distracted, he shoots out the other leg and quick as a flash jumps down his snorkel. Of course, Wayne's history when he starts sucking in the bathwater tends to panic a bit. It's all a blur of spear guns and flippers. <laughs> but after last night, I wouldn't be at all surprised if he chucked it in. You mean he's not going to wrestle the whale? I think not, Narelle. Why not? Well, last night he was doing a spot of underwater photography. You know, the Instamatic and the Glad Bag caper. <laughs> and I said to him, I said to him, Wayne, you'd better take the flash bulb out. But he wouldn't listen and sure enough, kaboom. The bathroom lights up, he shoots out of his speedos four times around the shower attachment and lands head first in the lab. <laughs> Took four plumbers and a block and tackle to get him out. <laughs> By the way, how's Ted? Oh, a bit seedy. Oh? Yeah, he was hang gliding into the back garden. He was on his final landing run and looking good, but suddenly, whack, his jockettes got caught on the TV area. <laughs> Oh, that's very nasty, Narelle. It's terrible. I can't get Channel 9 at all now. <laughs> that was The Naked Figure Show, starring the good buying at 35 cents a pound, Ross Higgins, the expensive but prime quality Nolene Brown, and the cheap but plentiful Kev Goldby. The slightly bruised but still good eating Double J Band was under the musical direction of the sweet and juicy Michael Pajanic. Noises and other sound effects were made by the small but brimming with juice John McGraw, Ron Wenman and Steve Collins. This show was recorded by the sun ripened and packed full of help Mike Byrne and Pete Walker. Written and produced by the ideal for bottling Gary Riley and Tony Sattler. David Ives gave up his leather apron and hand trolley to be executive producer. The Naked Figure Show is an RS Double J production and good buying at any price.